As the book of Genesis relates in the Old Testament, after creating earth and animals, God Yavhe created the first man, Adam, and from the rib of Adam he created the first woman, Eve, and he made them live in the paradise of Eden, where they had everything they needed to subsist. He only gave them one condition, which was not to eat from the forbidden tree. But where does this information come from? What does really support the theory of creationism? And how is it that more than 2,000 years ago, according to our science, they were able to build so many underground cities in what would be today the territory of Turkey? Some of them with more than 20 levels depth. Authentic cities with capacity to shelter entire families, food and animals. With water tanks, very sophisticated ventilation shafts and a perfectly designed archaeologic structure. And how they were able to connect some of these cities with underground tunnels, some more than 8 kilometers long. And even more, what led them to want to live beneath the earth with such equipment that allowed them to isolate themselves from the surface. And on the other hand, what led them to build big pyramids? Only with the purpose to be used as tombs for kings or pharaohs? And if so, why has it been found liquid mercury ducts in rivers inside or below many pyramids, like for example in the Teotihuacan pyramid in Mexico? Are these rivers of liquid mercury an honor to the deceased as our history justifies? And if no one has ever wondered, where did so many called primitive societies got so much mercury from? Hello friends, welcome to Pleiadian Knowledge. I am Christina. Let's continue with the history of Earth. I know I have commented this on previous videos, but I like to remind you again that all dates provided are just a chronological approximation to history. As you know, time is not linear, so neither is history. Although Yaskis Baru is trying to give us a time arrow that is as precise as possible, since she knows that that is how we understand history better. But I want to point out, that is not how she perceives or understands history. Although she understands linearity, it is not how she works. So we will find that some sequences of events have no explanation or do not match the dates if they are observed in a linear way. Instead, if they are observed in a non-linear way, everything makes sense. If we have the opportunity later on, we would like to go deeper with Yaski in how she really perceives history. I think it would be very interesting. So, before I start with today's story, I would like to explain a little bit more about the Atlantean and Lemurian civilizations and in special about the pyramids. Yasgis Varu explained that the Atlantean and Lemurian civilizations had advanced technology, both with aerial capacity. The Atlantean pyramids were distributed through the civilization. The main function was to provide free energy to cities. It was nothing less than power reactors with zero-point energy. All pyramids formed and are still forming, even though in a decadent and low power state, an energetic structure, like an energetic grid that encloses the planet, with the function of providing electric power that was free and without cables, with Tesla's principle or zero-point energy, as you know it there. 
although they are or were portals and centers for consciousness expansion as well, like centers of psychic energy expansions or boosters, astral projection facilitators, especially for shamans and healers for not using for religious reasons, to communicate with their entities and everything that it was in the afterlife. Some pyramids were intended to be condensers of subtle and non-electrical energies only. That is to say, not all pyramids had the function of generating useful electrical power. Unlike the pyramids that were built by the Federation's races, such as the pyramids of Giza, which use water as a conductor of internal polarity. Mesoamerican and other Atlantean pyramids used mercury to potentialize the charge differential for its high electrical transmission plasticity. Instead, the Lemurian civilization used mainly water-based pyramids for the clear influence from the Federation races at the time. The Atlantean pyramids were equipped with canal structures, where large amounts of liquid mercury circulated, using part of the principle of polarity between the sky and the ground, electric polarity. As you know, the clouds and the atmosphere have an electric charge, and the ground has another one. When one polarity is charged too much, a spark is created, because electricity seeks grounding, generating in this way a lightning. A pyramid is not more than a system to channel the charge differential between the atmosphere and the Earth in a continuously and controlled way to provide a usable power for electrical appliances and light in general. For example, the pyramid of Chichen Itza was a mercury-based zero-point reactor with portals as an alternative use with ties to the sun especially. The mercury was exported from refineries that were located outside of the planet. I don't know the exact point of these refineries, I only know by logic that they were located in the constellation of Orion and Draco, where the reptiles came from, not from a single but from countless planets, as the whole region was, and still is, filled with reptile races. Take a note that many so-called reptile races are not necessarily reptile-based, but only have reptile appearance. Some look like reptiles, but they are mammals. Going back to the refineries, it's not like they were characterized by them precisely, but as an interstellar civilization, they had some kind of industry that would support them in what it was necessary. As happens with any other interstellar civilization, since they cannot make their ships out of nowhere, they need to have their production resources, ship parts factories, shipyards, and all that. They can't manifest a ship with their mind, they are not at that level of consciousness advancement. It is possible to manifest a ship with thought from very high densities, of course. But as I said before, if you can manifest a ship with your thought, you don't need a ship. So Mercury was brought to Earth through portals or with primitive ships that use stargates as a way of transcending great distances. Mostly natural portals in space, like the suns, or the ones found on large planets, like here in Saturn. But also small artificial ones, like portable portals, or almost portable. Just as an illustration, they are like this, or very much alike, this one from Stargate. Mercury is mined on planets or asteroids. Then it gets refined to remove impurities and then transform it to an electrical grate, but still has more uses, as it is a heavy metal that can be enriched, as the uranium is enriched as well, to then be used in a nuclear plant. In Atlantis, there were also nuclear power plants that worked with uranium, but were mainly for warlike use. Enriched mercury, it is called red mercury on Earth. 
If you spin that Mercury at a high speed like on a turbine and pass a lot of electrical power through it, it causes a toroidal electromagnetic vortex with gravity cancellation properties. But it's clear that a specific gravitational frequency control is needed to effectively control these anti-gravitational properties of red mercury. Without control, only part of the energy passing through the device containing the red mercury will be applied to cancel the gravity. The rest is extra energy and is dangerous, since it is a lot. That is because in this order, the entire anti-gravitational device containing mercury will produce a whole range of frequencies randomly and only the result of gravity cancellation will be noticed when some frequency transmitted by the device coincides by chance with the frequency of gravity where the device is located. If the specific frequency of the external gravity site the device is known, the frequency emitted by the device can be moved to the specific frequency to cancel the gravity with an efficiency of 100% and with a much lower energy consumption in a safe and controlled way, like it is done on a spaceship. These readings depend on the gravity sensors, which spaceships have. The sensors indicate the properties of gravity to the ship's computer, making the changes to the turbines. According to Wikipedia, red mercury doesn't exist. But look at the logic. It says so only because it is not in the periodic table, as if everything in the periodic table was all that exists. The same with UFOs. They would never tell people that red mercury isn't reached mercury and is a spacecraft engine turbine material. There are terrestrial references to red mercury in Diaclox trials in Nazi Germany. Back to the pyramids. Although there are clear external differences between the Federation pyramids or Atlanteans due to the clear influence of local cultures or the people who build them, they all function on the same principle. They all follow the same basic mathematical pattern. The biggest difference is in the complexity of operation and technology. Mercury-based zero-point reactors can be built smaller and the same effect as water-based reactors can be obtained in a smaller place or with less mercury. That is, they do not depend on the environment like water-based ones. They can be made smaller and very efficient. Instead, a zero-point water-based reactor, like the Giza's ones, need underground chambers and rivers, and even a water bomb system that runs down the passages, access to the Queen's chamber, to create a strong ground connecting effect. Therefore, they are more complicated to manufacture than the mercury-based one. The main problem with mercury-based pyramids is their added toxicity. Even today, they are a problem or a focal point of contamination, especially for the subsoil and permeability of the place and local aquifers. The ground-based ones with water are cleaner and I would dare to say that they are clearly more advanced and efficient. They say in terrestrial science that an advanced civilization harvests energy from the stars. No, that's limited human interpretation. You don't need to harvest a star, because a zero-point reactor provides all the energy you need. There is no explanation unless aliens enter within the answer. Do you know the Kardashev scale? By observing the classification of civilizations, you can see that everything is based on their power to process and increase energy. First of all, from their planet, then the Sun, later the galaxy, clearly of human mentality. Civilizations like Taigetas would fall off that scale, because they don't need to exploit or harvest the energy, 
not from their planet, their sun, not even their galaxy. They have transcended all of that. Because of these things, they don't accept the existence of aliens. It is just out of any official or scientific understanding for them. As long as they only observe the material world, they will not understand alien civilizations or the cosmos, nor how it actually works. Because they reduce everything to 3D or 3D understanding. As Nikola Tesla said, once they look at the non-material world, they will make more progress in a decade than in the last 100 years. As you can see, they've been teasing us for millennia. Yes, he explained that the pyramids we have on the surface have been dismantled. They have taken all the technology and left only the structure to the public. Even though there are still pyramids in operation with all this technology and that no one is using. For example, the ones that are submerged in the Bermuda Triangle area, which are responsible for the magnetic anomalies and where some Atlantean cities were located. We will talk about it in another video. We will talk about them in another video. But also, for example, there is another one in Crimea, in an underground chamber in the south of the island. This is a water-based one and it was used to feed a federation base on the area, formerly the base of Taigeta. And that is the reason of the dispute between Russia and the West Hemisphere over the control of Crimea. If you are interested in knowing more about water-based pyramids, especially those of Giza, I recommend the video Those Who Build the Pyramids of Egypt that can be found at the channel Despejando Enigmas of the contactee Robert. It's very interesting. I'll leave the link to the video in the description. Side note for the English world, in this case you can find the same information in the channel Cosmic Agency from Gosha and we will leave the link of her video in the description. So, having this said, we start with our history. About 15,000 years ago, during the flourishing and expansion of the Atlantean civilization, reptiles began to experiment with their Lyrian slaves. The objective was to make them more submissive and accommodating, to avoid revolts and other possible problems arising from oppression. One of the largest concentration camps where genetic experiments were launched was in the area of Turkey, where the Lyrians were led to live in underground cities under reptiles' control and under the assumption that it's how they were supposed to live. These concentration camps are listed in the Old Testament as the Paradise or the Garden of Eden. The controllers tried to modify the Lyrians in laboratories, trying to suppress genes and modifying DNA. But it did not work as they expected. The Lyrians had a great connection to the source, and all the changes produced in laboratory returned to their origin, either in the altered individual or in the next or subsequent generations. So they did not get to make the changes permanent. Then, the reptiles in Atlantis decided to bring genetic transformation to a mind control level, since it could not be achieved with a test tube in a laboratory. They began to use this mind control, along with isolation of perception, to guide the slave humans to alter their own DNA using a belief system. Sometimes, babies were separated from mothers at birth and given to other adults, chosen as teachers who raised them and indoctrinated them with reptile teaching since babies, instilling in them other values, other ideas. 
forcing them to suppress their exceptional intelligence qualities and their connection to the etheric field. That is, to make them dependent on these races, the creators, as gods, so that the Lyrian humans could not oppose to exploitation. The goal was the same, to move them away from their connection to the source and guide them to modify their own DNA. Little by little, the minds of children were changing, suppressing the parts or qualities that the controllers did not want, reinforcing them not to remember who they are or who they were, while seeking qualities like obedience and low intellect, being this last one essential. That is, they limited them mentally so that they believed in a deterministic and material world. So they do not realize that they have the same creation capabilities as their oppressors. On many occasions, adults were sacrificed, leaving only the children to start a new group. Eden was a site controlled by Atlantis, where they could see how their new artificially created race developed, and when it didn't work out, they would remove it and put another one. For all this, it was vitally important that the controllers were not seen in order to maintain an illusion of freedom in the minds of slaves, making them believe that they are alone in the universe and that they must obey the gods, achieving like that their collaboration by their own free will, just like they do today allowing them a degree of evolution that was controlled and supervised by these races with very basic technology, the minimum to function, also like today. The reptiles were perfecting my control until they created with the Lyrians a new race, Adam or Adamic race, a race known today as the modern human, establishing a system of beliefs and ideas according to their interests of what was possible and not, a guide to history and the reason for existence. From all these were born later the Sumerian tablets, the mother of the Bible, and now our modern science, the basis of human society. But on the other hand, and at the same time, there was Lemuria, made up from Lyrians who had escaped the oppression of the reptiles. The controllers had failed to suppress their intellect and memories. They knew themselves free, and that is why they had escaped from the Atlantis. They were the Eves. Lemuria was developed with the help of matriarchal interstellar societies, like Taigetan, and later Engan and Solatian. That was the snake. The Eves, which included both men and women of the Lyrian race, were empowered with universal knowledge, the forbidden fruit. Adams and Eves were the same race, the only difference was the mind. As many of you already know, we are the creators, and we are not this body. This body is only our reflection, the shadow of who we are above. It is us who create and modify this body, and not the opposite. Therefore, it is very difficult to alter and modify the body. It would be like modifying a shadow. In the end, the object that produces that shadow will always have control of it. The same goes for genes. It is very difficult to modify the body genetically and that this alteration continues generation after generation because the being above, the one who runs the body, will modify it as it wants. The only way is through mind control, by making the consciousness, soul, that directs the body, believe how has to modify it guiding it through ideas and beliefs so that it makes that genetic modification that prevails as long as those ideas and beliefs last. As Svaru told us, the human being is Lyrian and their DNA is complete, only deactivated, but not by a test tube. 
but by the manipulation of a human consciousness, because it is consciousness that activates, deactivates, and rewrites a gene, chain of genes, or the entire genetic sequence of a species. And it is also consciousness that creates in this way a new species, and not by random mutations or by natural selection. So, the awakening of humanity will return its DNA of 12 strands and 24 chromosomes, because it is already there, only suppressed with the use of mental control. The only thing that limits humans is the idea or belief that they are limited. That is why the controllers are so careful when it comes to implement their agendas, and some of these agendas are gradually incremented within several generations to maintain the illusion and people being able to tie up loose ends easily. Living in an unreal world, but accepted as valid for having no other choice, no other place to compare. That's why they isolate us from the outside world, from aliens. That is why they carefully manipulate all our knowledge down to the smallest detail and rewrite our history according to their interests and agendas. To finish, I would like to give you a few more details that Yashis Baruch has provided us about the symbology of Adam and Eve and the concentration camp of Eden. So with this, I'm saying goodbye. Thank you very much for being here and listening and see you in the following video. One of the factions of the Atlantis were located in what is now Egypt. As we have said before, the Atlantean civilization was complex and cosmopolitan. The Sphinx was built by them. It is more than 12,000 years old and precedes the pyramids of Giza. Actually, the pyramids were not built until many years later. The Sphinx was a symbol of power. It also refers to the introduction of agriculture in the Nile Valley. There were two Sphinxes, one next to the other, but one of them was destroyed. It is unknown the reason and by whom. The lions symbolize Egypt. The lion, like the whole. Two lions represent the lower and upper Egypt. The sphinxes were side by side, as it is still shown today to lions on the both sides of a door. The woman's head, because it is a woman, represents the constellation of Virgo where the Egyptian New Year begins, in September, which coincides with the rainfalls and growth of the Nile and the beginning of the planting season. It is for that reason that the Sphinx looks to the east, where the sun rises. And the lion's body represents Leo, the last sign of the Egyptian zodiac, the end of the Egyptian year. The Sphinx has always been like this, but there is a theory that says it used to have a jackal's head, Anubis. The theory is false. It is only ignorance of the way of thinking of ancient pre-pre-dynastic Egypt, or before pre-dynastic. In the ancient Egypt, the woman was represented as a snake, and this was repeated in other parts of the world, in China, in Japan, and for example, in some legends of Mesoamerica. Genesis means the genes of the Isis goddess. The ancient reptiles used the snake as a symbol for woman because of its similarity to the DNA spiral. The snake symbolizes many things, but not reptilians. It also is or represents wisdom, so it is used in the Caduceus of Hermes as a symbol of medicine, as representing the DNA. but it also represents spaceship. It comes out of the sun and contains wisdom. For example, the feathered snake represents a spaceship in an atmospheric flight. However, returning to Atlantis and Lemuria, Adam represents the Adamic human race 
the Adams were the slaves of the reptiles, a whole race created by them, by perceptual alteration, not by genetics. And Eve, Eve represents the race before the Adams. Eve, just like Adam, was not a woman, but a race, and that included, as it is normal, both men and women. Eve equals Lemuria. The Eves, as a whole race, were tempted by the knowledge of their stellar sisters, matriarchy of holographic civilization, mainly Taigeta. Knowledge represents here the forbidden fruit that those who live under the Cabal, under the Atlantis, the controllers, should not have, because they get out of control and overturn against them, as happened with the Eves which founded Lemuria. Then the stellar matriarchy, here represents the snake, gives the forbidden knowledge to the Eves, who will go out later to free the repressed Adams. After all, they are related. Lemuria was interpreted as the female side because it had a matriarchal society based on the influence of other races as the Taigetan. Lemuria equals female equals Eve. Even today, the feminine, the emotional, the integration with love are despised, in favor of male logic, isolated, without integration with other side, the emotional side, to the extent that women with power act or should act like men and do not like empowered female women, non-existent concept on earth, which is equivalent to matriarchal society, where everything is integrated, including also the masculine side. Returning to the symbology of Adam and Eve, in the center we have the tree of life. This is a concept, as I was telling you before, that was first Egyptian and then Sumerian, in that order. In contrary to what you are told there, Egypt precedes Sumerian and Babylonian concepts. The snake with the tree creates the caduceus. Medicine but coming out of the snake, snake equals the woman who brings the knowledge, apply it to that it came from a ship. Ship equals snake, meaning coming from off the planet. And on the other hand, we have the paradise or garden of Eden, that it was not a paradise, but a concentration camp where they experimented with humans. You could say that this experiment had a period of duration of about 2,500 years, placing it since about 15,000 years ago to about 12,500 years ago. Dates as usual only approximate. And during this period, they were under the regime of the Atlantean civilization. They put the Lyrians in those underground cities, implanting ideas to them from birth, teaching them that this is how they should live, that is the best way to shelter. So they do it at will, because they don't have any other option. It's like asking me how they do to convince modern humans to live together clustered in big, illogic, dirty, overpopulated cities that make them sick. It's the same thing. They just have to create in their minds the idea that living like that under the ground is the best choice for them. That is why the archaeologists themselves do not understand why or how they did or excavated these underground cities, surprisingly with a good ventilation, despite the depth, since the inhabitants were quite primitive not fitting into their concepts about the abilities of the inhabitants of the Neolithic. And that's because those underground cities were built by beings with very advanced technology, but with the intention of putting their human farm there. Simply structural calculations, combined with the right way to promote ventilation, would be a nightmare or almost impossible for the level of understanding of the people from that time. But the secret is, in the curved forms, not rectilinear, 
of the internal structures. The straight structures, square and rectangle shapes in houses and buildings that are used today, like boxes, do not promote the movement of energy, getting it stuck. This energy can be called chi, and also sees and offers the dynamic movement necessary so that the air does not get trapped. The atmospheric pressure difference between one side and the other of the underground structure simply creates an air pump effect, which injects or moves fresh air through the underground structure or city, all using only atmospheric pressure and wind variables between exits and vent openings. The houses in almost all interstellar civilizations are of such shapes, rounded, almost without straight angles, for the same reasons. Back to mind control. From the beliefs imposed at the time, emerge later the Sumerian tablets, after it the Old Testament, and later the New too, and other religious variants. These contain stories from almost everywhere in an attempt to include the Pagan, the Druidic, Celtic, Gnostic, among which would include events that happened in Egypt and Sumerian, altered and distorted for the people and adjusted to their limited understanding. They are nothing less than their data imposed on the human population as absolute truths. Truths to follow or penalties of incalculable suffering for all who dare not to follow the rules. But nothing has changed, the same formula today as it did back then. The humans who lived at Eden were slaves without knowing they were. As happens to farm animals, they were given food, but not as if it was falling from the sky, only so that it was not so difficult for them to obtain without involving work, because to exploit them it was not yet necessary. As well as being naked really meant that they couldn't defend themselves because they didn't have the knowledge to or be self-sufficient, which indicates that they were given free livelihood in some way. Naked without knowledge and without self-knowledge without the power to realize that they are indeed naked. Also, the unsustainable fact that Adan was created before Eve proves that it is a symbolism, because first there were the Adams as people under the control of the reptile invaders and then the Eves would arrive to help them. Both races were genetically similar. The rib means here that it contains a lot of DNA for cloning. But this makes no sense if you take it literally, because this must be interpreted in code. Because biologically speaking, the female will always come before the male, being the male a variant of the female of any species. That is why men have nipples, being that the Y chromosome is only activated between the second and third weeks of gestation, where the nipples are already formed or with the cells programmed to form them. So, in the Lyrians, as in many, if not all species of mammals, the male is only a variant of the primordial being, which expresses the real genetics of the species, the female. This is undeniable biology and it has anything to do with feminist agendas, nor with the fact that the one who says these words is a woman. It's just a fact and that's how it is.